work it out very well in the last century. I think, uh, and people got uh, somehow uh, specialized in, in particular subjects. And uh, as a physicist, I think uh, even with the physics, there are certainly few areas: top physics, higher physics, astronomy, and so on. And we have passed actually quite a lot using that model. But uh, sometimes this is a, a very uh, simplistic point of view of nature. And uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, I am referring to the natural sciences. That might part of the Nowadays, uh, we have been pushing the idea of uh, interdisciplinary collaboration in, in uh, chemistry, biology and physics, mathematics, in things that are more complex, things that are not simple to, uh, to explain using just a, a, a simple theory. And uh, one is thinking, for example, in nanoscience, in which you have to have collaborations from many, many, uh, many fields. Now, if you add to that the impact on, 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 on society, then this is the, the problem is gets even bigger, more complex. So, uh, unfortunately, we got educated following the idea of the student physics or mathematics or whatever. Uh, and that was in the late, so maybe in the 80s, 60s, 80s, uh, where this movement was really pushing things in that direction. And actually, I remember that uh, uh, at a bachelor's uh, uh, degree, actually, I was learning, I was taking courses in sociology, in etymologies, in, uh, in history, in uh, uh, universal geography, and so on. And things that uh, were of, of general interest for, for, the, for the students. Nowadays, this has this this has changed. I mean, most of the bachelor of sciences, uh, well, not even that, the, the, the free uh, university uh, education uh, is more specialized. So, uh, I think that one of the of the main things that we have to, to promote or is to go back to go back to the old ideas or, or to the old way of uh, educating people in which uh, uh, secondary school or after, the years after, you have to, to learn a little bit about sociology. You have to learn a little bit about history, about literature. That, uh, that's already uh, wiped up from the, from the problems. So, uh, and, and this is just taking part of, of natural uh, sciences. Now, uh, at the university level, certainly it is necessary, I think, and mo that may be most, more, more important, to include subjects that has to be with, with, with the society, the society of uh, So, uh, all the points that was marked by, by I think it's, uh, it's interesting, but I don't know how to, 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 to give a particular idea on how to, to, to tell you or, or propose a, a, a given way in order to put you on, the, on this uh, uh, publish all, all these ideas. So, um, what I uh, think, and uh, the first point that I was just asking is that was, we were supposed to give some ideas mainly in, in uh, global warming. Um, and this, this subject, as many others, I was just thinking of mega cities, water supply to mega cities, or even elections. There are so many things that are so, com so complex that uh, uh, in order to find intelligent solutions, one has to have people 
there can be many cases and then in, uh, in the idea to collaborate because we are very individual persons. So we have educated like that. It's very hard for us or for me or for people of, of my age to have collaborations in general with other groups. Maybe with people that is working in, in, in this <coughs> related to, to mine is, is, is simple, but if uh, uh, to interact with chemists or to interact with uh, biologists is not simple. And that's, I think, uh, the way in which we got educated. So, I think one of the first uh, steps that we have to pro propose is to, to review the, the, the problems and to find out if uh, the old way of, of uh, uh, educating uh, youngsters can be recovered and, uh, and make simpler the collaboration and to see on a weather uh, view uh, the social problems. I always, uh, I have some political friends uh, that have been governors of Solana, and they think that the intelligent people is who study uh, uh, hard uh, sciences, mathematics or physics, and, and I always tell you, no, for me, the intelligent people is the social. <laughs> because the electrons move in always in the same way. And people is predictable. I mean, when you put two people together, you certainly will not know how, how we inter interact and, and, and move as a, as, a, as a group. So uh, I think uh, uh, independent of the subject or particular area, one of my uh, first ideas that I offer to you is to think in this problem about the uh, secondary and maybe later uh, uh, in the well, First of all, I'd like to thank us for the invitation. It is an honor. In fact, I I was not able to attend all the talks, but uh, it has been a great to learn. I have learned a lot. Uh, I mean, least here is maybe a partner, biochemist, medical doctor, working hard science and uh, structural biology. So I won't, walk, I won't talk about as a <laughs> biochemist, and also I won't talk as a member of a well, part as a member of a academy, but I particularly for use my head of a. Of a scientific director of Apergy, and to focus maybe uh, in this uh, few minutes on uh, how the funding agents can, well, first of all, learn from uh, the society, from the science and from the society, and how to, to uh, create programs that uh, we thought this uh, area about the, uh, the study of society and nature. So, uh, FAPEG is a uh, foundation with a budget of 250, about 200-250 million dollars per year. So for a, a regional foundation, just for the state region, that's quite a lot. I mean, maybe we could have uh, the, the, the board of directors and the, the council could have decided, for example, well, let's do like NIH and SF. Let's give enough money to the top science uh, and let's have a cut of 20 percent, and uh, probably would be able to to fund projects that uh, be the same level, or maybe twice the level of, uh, <coughs> in, in the United States or, or Europe. But I think uh, maybe because of this need of uh, uh, interacting with society, we in, over the years, and we, we didn't start many years ago with this budget. We, we arrived uh, right with this budget. Now it's. Uh, is predicted by the uh, by uh, the state constitution. That's two percent of the GDP of the state. That's what gives two hundred million. So we decided to make a combined program. So uh, on one hand, we have to, of course, to take care. One, so we have three pillars. I'm not sure if we're doing well with the three pillars, but one, of course, is to support the good science in the state. 
and the good problems. We know that the science, uh, I think Louise yesterday with the doctor gave a uh, good talk showing that you know that uh, uh, we are moved by curiosity, by uh, I mean, passion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, even even the uh, even the exact people, <laughs> exact science or experimental, we we are moved by uh, the, the curiosity, the, the passion, the uh, the unknown, uh, much like uh, an artist, and uh, so. That's we have to, and these are there are bright people everywhere, and they have to support that. But we also have to, I think, uh, have did very well. We have to, to do this connection, maybe not on the plan, but have a single thing: uh, how to connect science to, to society. And I like to quote a previous governor uh, when he uh, of the state when he used to come to to deliver the. The grants to the, the science, he would say, he would quote uh, uh, Nelson Rodrigues, that is a famous uh, Brazilian, uh, that is, is there, is a novel writer, or also a play writer, and he would say, Life as it is. And he said, I like science because it's life as it is. Of course, he didn't know <laughs> what was <the> science. <laughs> it's not a power model. <laughs> but, but what was good is that because as he was learning. That well, and then after a uh, few months or maybe a few years, he del uh, after reading the projects and delivering the the the, 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 pro the, the, the grants, he started. I like to quote Nelson Rodriguez, but I think it is better. It's not life as it is; it's life as it could be. So he understood that uh, to some extent, uh, science sometimes can give results. Four or five years, because politicians I was thinking four or five years, but may take ten years, fifteen years, twenty years. So I think uh, we have, of course, and then especially and then to use the professor as a study case, we have to do that. Our universities, we uh, we have, for example, the state of Rio de Janeiro, we have five universities that are among the twenty uh, top in, in the uh, in Brazil. Yeah. Large, for example, Federal University of Rio Janeiro has uh, about 70,000 students, uh, or 5,000 uh, uh, faculty members. So it's, of course, we cannot have everybody doing top research, but they can we can look for to have some calls, especially some areas of, a, of, a, for example, education, and and combine. So. And then I think we learn in, over these years that uh, we have to, for example, we learn, for example, that, that in, in, in this issue that we're talking about, uh, global uh, weather channel uh, change, uh, we know that uh, uh, in Rio we don't have the whole capacity, capacity. So we planned it with the people from Sao Paulo and we have a grant uh, proposal go in Sao Paulo and stay in Rio de Janeiro. Well, it's not easy because of suspension, capacity, <laughs> and different ways of thinking, but it, it, it was good. And in other areas, for example, we have two big programs. That one is called Think Rio. That's pretty much uh, to think what, for example, non-technology, how non-technology, uh, or biotechnology, different areas of biomedicine can help, well, can uh, we have we can increase size, and, and uh, I think someone spoke this morning about that uh, uh, Latin America contributed three uh, percent. So Latin America of uh, science produ uh, production the, in the world, Brazil is close to 2.1, 2.2, so it's increasing. But we still need it to improve the quality, to uh, uh, get the citation, etc. So we think that with this program, we we are going. Many directions. We know that the most, although we are number 12 or 13 in Brazil in terms of uh, papers, we are quite below in terms of the patents. We need to know that we need to do this translation to to applications. So that's how the program was organized. The other program. So that's a pro. For example, this year we had a call for 30 million dollars. We had another pro that's called uh, prioritize, prioritize in Rio de Janeiro. And that's for solutions, more some problem like, for example, dengue fever. We know that the, 
uh, we cannot have a vaccine in in, uh, in in one or two years or takes time but sometimes some uh, measurements or some understanding how to treat the patients the, the bad case so we had this calls about dealing with these problems deal, dealing for example with the conflicts that uh, you know that states of region have a lot of problems so so we try to mix that and and that's not easy because of course as uh, uh, of course we'll, everything is based on merit and the peer review but it's peer review for that call so if you have a problem a problem to select the best uh, programs to to deal with violence uh, you cannot handle violence only with a, a single mono disciplinary uh, 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 area, so we needed to do to get that much disciplinary groups and takes time. So and of course this uh, money then has to be distributed among all these different uh, uh, priorities and uh, and sometimes we, we never know if we are doing good because we are to some extent okay, uh, attacking different parts of, uh, of all this uh, uh, very broad possibility of uh, on one hand improving excellence on the other hand making science to get there more for example educational programs to to take the, the improve the, the, the or to decrease the science illiteracy that like most of the place but in Brazil is quite uh, great so every time uh, a journalist comes to in Brazil to interview a science. He doesn't know what is a virus, what is a protein, what is a, a particle. So, well, we're talking about the journalist. Imagine how to explain that for for, for the common people. So, I think uh, because this money, and in concluding, is uh, comes from the from the, the taxpayers. We have this compromise. You cannot say, "Wow, we just want to have money exactly like the science in, in, in North America or in Europe." No, we have to, to to have a compromise between reaching, improving uh, the good quality of research, but also in improving the understanding and having some um, increase the chance to get these results to the society. Sometimes we succeed. Sometimes we have to do 100 times to have one success. Okay, that's the using the hat of uh, uh, foundations. Thank you. <laughs> now we pass it to you. We beg you, we beg to make concrete questions. A very, very brief comment. Please, you have the floor. Professor Roberto Guimarães. Como eu sou falei, tudo acostumado a dizer, essa coisa não se denuncia em público. Ah, que denunciar. Desculpe. Thank you. Uh, I try to be as brief as I can. After, and I'd like to hear from everybody a complete, uh, two complete proposals. Uh, after the brilliant summary that only if I can do of history in the past. It's like 200 years of science in five years. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it seems to me, and, and the basis for my proposal had two things. On the one hand, all of what uh, Heidi was revising to us show us that it seems to me that we, we are not in a period of lack of science. Uh, so I don't think that we need more knowledge in a lot of areas and what we need is a deficit of concrete actions keep there on the other hand uh, I think that all the changes that Heidi showed also poses a different shift in the paradigm of how science approaches and this reminds me of uh, to make it brief of what Aaron Ludovsky used to say in his classical book about uh, uh, public policy in the title, Speaking Truth to Power. 
This was science in the 80s. Now, I think that, paraphrasing him, the, the question, the big question is, how is not willing to listen? Because, uh, as, as I said, just to give one example, climate change, there's a lot that we need to know. But with what we know already, we don't need more knowledge. It's a lack of, tremendous lack of action. And as a political science, I start laughing and crying when I hear people saying, no, research always ends saying something about political will. I say, for God's sake, there is not lack of political will. There is a lot of political will not to translate science into action. So now comes my proposal, don't get nervous, Manuel, I'm finishing. <laughs> so my two questions, and I'd like to hear from you, is being coherent with what uh, Heidi showed us should be the case that science, both natural and social, should, now that they left the ivory tower, think about two things. First of all, getting back to the funders and pressure funders to fund research on what are the decision-making process, what are the actors, the institutions that actually don't allow science to be translated into policy. This is a very important research question. And second, and then I finish, is it time also, now that it's not every town, that science should be, become a little bit more advocacy and uh, work with society to put science in, in, into action? Because we took this as our challenge, how to translate to policy. It's not our problem any longer. Thank you. Sorry for taking so long. <laughs> Thank you, Roberto. Uh, is there any other question? Please. The is to think about the sustainability of Atlantic rainforest. Okay. Any other question or comment? Lina. Lina Alvarez. First of all, to emphasize what uh, Anthony said in the previous panel, that the difference between Burkina Faso and Burundi was one country in peaceful and one country in war. And this is ap applicable also for the, for the planet, for the future Earth. We need peace and we don't need wars in the world. Another recommendation for this. Uh, Future because I am proposing to continue doing this uh, type of workshops, uh, dialoguing uh, with natural scientists and social scientists. A uh, recommendation to include science education in the next uh, next step of this workshop. And another recommendation, and I need also maybe comments of, of you uh, in, the, in this panel. Uh, linking the scientific community to teachers, to the education community, is very necessary to be involved. Um, as Gerson was saying that uh, they are doing, I know it takes it also, they have big experiences, how to link the scientific community to teachers. We need more research in social sciences. We need new theories, new methods, as Julia was saying, and we need to, to use complex systems to study complex phenomena. We need, as Heidi was saying, not from the linear model to non-linear model because society is a non-linear phenomenon. We need also an agree with Jose uh, Luis to include subjects in our education, primary, secondary, university level, to include contemporary problems of the uh, our contemporary society. Thank you. Well, this three, uh, please. Uh, okay, you can wait, no problem. Um, we have three uh, interesting questions and a new comment, so I'd like to pass the, the floor to the to Heidi and uh, okay, so um, I think those are great comments. Um, let me perhaps just address one of your questions, Roberto. Um, I think 
think what you're saying is that we need to look at whether our national research systems are fit for purpose. Um, it's not about production of more knowledge, it's about ensuring that we have systems that make sure that our knowledge works, right? Um, and so I think research on the research policy link is fundamental, and, and it, isn't, it isn't funded enough, and, and that's a plug for my own field of SDS. Um, but I also think that it's it's not just a, it's also about how we use existing knowledge. It's not necessarily about new production of new knowledge, but there is if I think about the social sciences and the kind of mainstream social science knowledge that we now need urgently to bring to the table, that knowledge exists. But the way in which we fund and organize research around issues like climate change means that that knowledge remains invisible. Um, so, and that's the next point I will speak to, is how, you know, what is that existing knowledge that we now need to bring to the table? Science advocacy, yes. Um, I think scientists, we forget that as scientists we play multiple roles. We are advocates, we are mediators, we are public intellectuals, we are teachers. Um, and so advocacy is a big debate, clearly, about where do you draw the lines, but it is something that scientists do. Um, and maybe it is a legitimate part of how we make sure that our knowledge works. Yeah, well, uh, I think that, uh, well, first of all, I think that we have to continue certainly these kind of meetings because, uh, to be honest, uh, some of the talks that I uh, listen, I could not follow completely the, the, the ideas uh, exposed by social uh, scientists, and I am sure that uh, some of the social scientists uh, just got knocked out with some of the ideas posted by, 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 by current core scientists. So, uh, yeah, as, uh, as Professor uh, mentioned, there is already some knowledge that if we would be able to convince the policy makers to adopt them, we could have a different world. Even with the knowledge that we have now. I mean, we know that uh, CO2 has to be reduced, and uh, we know the, the what produces and, and what is the, uh, the things to do in order to, to uh, diminish. But uh, many countries are just not listening, not doing anything about the problem in which we know the solution. So, even at this level, uh, there is no uh, communication or, or we are not able, and I, all scientists, I mean, uh, social and, 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 and science, uh, hard science uh, scientists, to convince the economy, the, the economists and the, and the uh, uh, policy makers to adopt measures that we know we we'll have to, to to have a better world, right? Well, uh, the other point is that uh, since we don't speak the same language, that's my feeling. Uh, that's what I feel that uh, we still need to work out to understand each other. I mean, uh, this is just a, a clear. Uh, <coughs> That shows clearly that uh, a lot has to be done. We, as, a, as adults, as, as a senior scientists, we are not able to understand each other in some parts. How can we expect that uh, the youngsters would, could do it if we don't modify the the way we we educate them? So, and uh, the last point is. Uh, that uh, uh, Ixu, in the Rome conference, organized a roundtable asking uh, scientists to participate in educational programs. That was a real concern three years ago, and some 
please go read it on Reddit also in New Zealand. And not much has been done. Not much has been done since uh, that problem was was uh, already marked. So uh, I think that we we still have a, a long way to do, but we have to like the water, try to find out the simplest and the most efficient way to to find the, the, the correct route. Very quickly. Yeah, I think the, the in fact I can uh, uh, summarize, I think uh, 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 address very well that one the main problem is of course in, in uh, especially in developed countries, education and, uh, and science and readiness. Uh, and uh, one of the problems we adopted here in a, in a dictatorial way is that, well, every sign that is funded by Fapergi should give at least one pub, a lecture in a public school a career. Of course, some complain about well, we're not obliged to do it, but they won't have the grant, <laughs> we won't renew it. But the idea is that, I mean, of course, this uh, gives some trouble. I mean, you have to, to call the, the director of the school and go there. Most of the public schools are in places that uh, are not in the downtown area. Sometimes some, many of the schools are in favelas. But, and I remember uh, some signs was, well, how I, can, I will explain my, uh, my project to, to kids in high school. If, uh, uh, even the the, 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 the students in uh, the university sometimes they don't understand what I do about well, you have to do it so and it turned out after we were running that for I don't know for five or six years and the results are very good of course it's still it's, it's small but uh, if you count that we support around 2,000 2,500 uh, uh, researchers in Rio and each one is giving uh, a lecture in a public school once a year and then this is changed including some of the prize that are coming here uh, I followed one uh, that uh, went to Caxias to in the, in the peripheral in the periphery of Rio de Janeiro and he was surprised when the students asked questions very important questions most of the questions I mean they understood very well he did a good job in explaining uh, uh, the science and uh, he was, but he was surprised at the level of the quest. And some of the quests were like, they asked, he, one of the kids asked, Do you believe in God? And he, <laughs> he had to answer that. I mean, and the other quest, I think that was easy for him. And he answered very well. But then the other question was, How could you, because he told his, his history until he got the Nobel Prize, how could you handle this thing of a, uh, competing for a Nobel Prize? And, and then, and having someone that had gotten an Nobel Prize was a, he's a, he's a uh, from Switzerland, so he had a colleague that got the Nobel Prize, and, and, well, many colleagues, but one that was just uh, in the other office. And how could you handle that? And so it uh, was very, uh, we were predicted to stay on a, a couple of hours, we stayed the whole afternoon, it was very good. So I think uh, these things are very important. I mean, of course, it doesn't solve, but I think it's, uh, it's part of a, uh, and the solution is education, of course, we have to take to bring the teachers to the university, the, the students to uh, hands-on uh, uh, activities, uh, uh, to learn. And I think, and then answering uh, Roberto, I think maybe the policy makers, they don't believe in science, they don't, they don't just believe in, they, they have to keep their, the program, I mean, some better of wheels and not good wheels, but uh, but they uh, they will only be uh, they only do the, the change need when uh, for we know have a lot of information about uh, climate change etc. When educate people start to press, I mean even in developed countries like the uh, U.S. where you have half of the population that doesn't believe in. in that uh, in Darwin, I mean, the, the, as the science, I mean, cannot separate religions from science. So we have, uh, imagine here in, uh, in, in developed country like Brazil. So I think 
is uh, it will not solve in, uh, in one generation, take many generations to, but we have to do it. There is no other way around. I mean, only by education we will confront all these uh, challenges that, uh, and of course with, uh, and I learned that with uh, people, that my colleagues on social science, that we have to, to talk up to, well, to, to interact and to, well, and that of course takes uh, effort of, of both sides because the way of thinking, the way of uh, doing things are different, but we have to do it. Thank you. Uh, we are running behind schedule. <laughs> so we will take only two quick questions. There are a lot of hands already. No, it's for Elisa, excuse me. And then the lady over there. And then we go to the second round of questions. And I have a proposal for the second round. Please. Okay, I would like to go back to the issue of democracy. I imagine that very much working with society. Uh, I think advocacy often is taken for society, and that's very dangerous. I, mean, I think given as a respectful attitude towards society, we should differentiate science from politics, from common law, etc. I have a suggestion of this one from the Minister of Science that covers the innovation. I can hear. Can you repeat? Ms. Hartman uh, presented a very uh, complete list of the new trends and number of challenges that we must face uh, in this new scenario. And I would like to hear about priorities. And in these two days, I, I, I would like to discuss more how to define uh, new ways, more democratic ways, in, in the process of definition priorities, more involving process and an increased engagement of social scientists and scientists in general. I think uh, you pointed out the persistent funding pressures and I think the definition of priorities, this process must be reviewed. Okay. Are you ready to comment or to say something? Anyone of you? I, I think the Eliza's point is well taken and I think the, the next comment takes us on to the next question on our list. No, no. <laughs> no. yeah. I'd like to comment on, uh, on uh, Elisa. Yeah, I fully agree with Elisa because, especially because of uh, our history, during the nineties, we had all the programs in, uh, to support science in Brazil were very applied uh, Thematic, and but there was no money, and then uh, I mean was just well, to, well I mean we enough created something that was very bad. The idea that uh, uh, is science, I mean, cannot uh, is to solve problems, immediate pro problems, and the society got that for a while. I mean, we it, that in fact was was very bad because even uh, people who are relatively well educated. Uh, uh, used to think like that, like I mentioned, the, the governor. So I think one has to, to look for the uh, very equilibrium between the two. And I think it's from the, the part, both from the, the, the supporters and, uh, and the, the, the governor have to, to implement that, uh, realizing that uh, you need both. I mean, you need to try to have, uh, and some things, I mean, to have more patents, you needed to have uh, companies to uh, take the knowledge and in, 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 in developing this research. Science will not develop too many patents, for example. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'd like to propose you, in order to save time, to combine the question two and question three in only... <laughs> huh? And only questions. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Please. Okay, let's 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 make uh, two and three, and let's ask the, the the panelists to be brief, and let's ask you to make short question and uh, see what will happen. Okay, please. What what time? What are the questions? Oh, please. You all have the this part. 
identification of specific yeah. research. Not now in your time. So everyone has to So. Okay, so, so the, the next question is really about what research areas. It goes back to your question. And I, I must say that, you know, I've been involved now in various visioning processes about setting priorities at the global level. I think it's really, it end, you end up invariably with a laundry list of topics. Um, and that needs to happen at the regional level, at the national level, by regional and national actors. I think it would be presumptive of me to say these are, these are research areas. But what I would um, want to say is that if you presume that the pressure is for science to enter the solution space, that whatever research areas we pick out, that the objective is for science to contribute to solutions, to specific social, ecological uh, challenges, sustainability challenges, whether those are about urbanization, about water security, health, the nexus between water, health, food and energy, uh, whatever. I would say that if, you, if we want to ensure that our science can lead, can contribute to solutions that are durable, that will last, and that are equitable, then there are a fundamental set of questions that we have to find good answers to. And those, are, those questions are fundamentally social science questions. And that's what we call in our report that was published in 2012, the transformative cornerstones of social science. It's the way there are questions that allow us to look at these concrete challenges through social lenses and to contest the systems and the processes underlying that shape those challenges. And very, very briefly, I, we don't have time to go into this. Alice referred to them in her uh, talk. There are questions about historical and contextual complexities, context referring not only to geographies, but also to personal and professional context, identity, race, gender, those kinds of issues. We need to understand how uh, phenomena like climate change play themselves out in different contexts. We need to understand the interdependencies of people's vulnerabilities to one from one problem to to another. So across the spectrum of risks and crises, the second cornerstone is about consequences. Is about understanding what social scientists do well, looking at the actual and unfolding effects of threats like climate change on people's daily lives particularly on vulnerable uh, groupings, understanding um, also how do we measure success of our existing policy interventions. The third one is about, and it's the big one for the social sciences, conditions and visions for change. It's about understanding and coming up with good answers to how do we not only change human behavior, but change social practice and the systems and institutions that perpetuate um, people's choices uh, and, and practices. It's also about understanding who sets the direction for change. When does change become politically, culturally um, unacceptable? Uh, when, when do we start talking about social engineering? So questions about change, behavior and practice are fundamental to have good answers to. Fourthly, we need to understand the role of values, beliefs, um, the inner dimensions because this is how we frame our understandings of threats and our responses to threats. Um, we need to understand, fifthly, um, issues of ethics and justice. We need to foreground those normative agendas in, in, in seeking solutions-oriented science. And finally, we do need to have better answers to how decisions are made, um, to questions of governance, yes, to questions of where does political will come from, uh, to questions like what is the role of economic interest in political decision making but equally the role of emotions in decision making um, and what is the role of science in all of that. So those six sets of questions, what I'm proposing is that if we want our science to lead to real transformation, not your garden variety transition, but deep profound social change that we know is necessary given the problems we face then we have to bring those types of social science questions in 
It doesn't mean that the social sciences take the lead, but those are the questions that we bring to framing how we understand problems uh, of climate change, of water security, etc., etc. That's what the social sciences uniquely bring. And so I'm suggesting that the real knowledge gap is around social transformation. Yeah, well, <coughs> all of this for that, but uh, as you just said, concerns uh, social scientists. Uh, I don't think uh, that the big challenge is to collaborate between uh, the two kinds of, uh, of uh, formations or scientific formations. And uh, the way I see that in order to advance a little bit and try to find out if you can get married with the other side is to recognize pro problems which are the problems that you would like to solve. Certainly it depends on the country, it depends on the region, it depends on many things. But uh, the first point is to recognize which problem you want to solve. After that, then you have to find money. And the third point is you have to call for proposals. And one of the uh, requirements for, for, for a proposal must be that has to be an interdisciplinary group. And uh, let's see how it works. I don't know if uh, we will understand each other, I don't know. Certainly we will make the, offer, the effort, but uh, I think uh, this would be a new, a new way of doing research, a new way of uh, trying to solve things. And um, just to make a, a free call. But uh, the first thing of all the, pro the problems that Heidi just mentioned, just pick out maybe the most relevant for Latin America or Europe or Asia or Africa. And uh, let's convince the funding agencies to put some money in order to ask for proposals for solutions. And uh, to have some maybe a meeting where you present the results of those studies in the future, I don't know why. But uh, that would be a way trying to, to see if it is if this works or we have to find some, some other way of work. Well, I'm confused <laughs> <laughs> of uh, the marriage of society and nature, and but uh, social science and uh, well, in the exact science. So I think uh, if you, uh, Tony Clayton gave good examples of uh, uh, in in in, uh, in areas that would be the social science area, how sometimes the policy goes against what was expected. But that is also true for many, for many, especially medicine. I mean, uh, many years ago, you were forbidden to to, to eat uh, eggs, but uh, uh, <laughs> and right now it's not good. so. so I, I saw. I mean, so ch things change. So that means that uh, a science it, it has not power, complete power. So we needed to do this exchange of the time and uh, based on uh, uh, both sides based on uh, uh, depend on uh, empirical questions uh, that address in different ways and more and more I think just conclude I think I point out that well, we need to do that more and more and uh, but we need to convince that to do that in a, in a, in a way that uh, in a, that will result will give results in the future not only to to have uh, uh, some time we find that with main program not only in, in, uh, in Latin America but uh, that you you have a program to to uh, t uh, transdisciplinary program or multidisciplinary program and people just get together and have the, the funds and each one does something but sometimes you don't have the exact match uh, especially in, in, in our countries here we don't have that because usually 
the money is not enough. So you, if you if, if you receive less money, then you cannot get all the results. You cannot have the full. Uh, you cannot reach the, the the full results, especially the ones that the program was developed. So I think it, it indeed uh, uh, is. Uh, if you want to have a, a program, this means that uh, uh, there will be a specific program and with a, a su substantial amount of money because science is expensive. I mean, it's not it's not cheap. I mean, it, 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 especially if you want to to have uh, complementary between areas. So, and uh, this is I think that a major problem is there is uh, uh, there's lack of money for especially to, to, to these programs. Well, we have Arturo Martini and Jose Franco. If anyone else wants to talk. Thank you. Uh, I think I was really happy with the last intervention of Heidi. She really showed the gaps in social science. However, I need to, I want to two comments. Comment one is that I do not think that politicians do not take care of that. I come from a family with politicians. The issue is not that they don't listen it, it's the turn of how they think. Long-term solutions are not solutions to them. You, we need to make an, a, an effort to listen to them and think with a framework that Heidi and uh, Alicia said, in that framework, in terms of how I will talk, and then they will need to listen. This is one point. Second point, we are talking about society and nature, etc., but we forget in this guidance how to address the scientists in political scientists. We really have a big problem there, a big challenge in this region. Political science in that, from Ministry of Science up to the National Research Councils, are not used in these new paradigms. We haven't reached yet them. We are far from reaching them, especially in the frame of the future, but we need to think, and they are the first that we need to convince, in order because they have money, that we are not talking something which is unstructured or out of the blue. We are talking something which we, we touch in the short, medium, and long term. Thank you, Chairman. Franco. Yeah. yeah, well, I really like uh, this last uh, uh, set of uh, fundamental questions you put, and I did. And um, I think those are really fundamental, but those are not the only ones that we should put on the table. There are a lot of other fundamental questions that probably we don't see them quickly related to society. But, you, you know, Getting to know what uh, dark energy or dark matter is, this is a fundamental question. What, whether the particle that was found in CERN was the Higgs boson or it was a Higgs-like boson, it's another <laughs> fundamental question. Uh, if we are able to reproduce mitochondrial chemistry in the laboratory, it's another fundamental question. If we understand the electromagnetic functioning of the brain, it's another fundamental question. And, and uh, we, we can go on and on and on. Of all these fundamental questions that we don't know how they will be related with society in the near future. Uh, when Maxwell found their equations, we didn't know that they were going to be fundamental for creating energy nowadays. If we use them to do all the energy transformation from solar to electricity and from whatever you want to another type of energy. And uh, so we have to be able to create new knowledge. I strongly disagree with something that was said before because we certainly need to, to create more new knowledge and at the same time, we have to learn how to put it in action. I fully agree with that second part. But we don't have uh, an overdue of knowledge. We have a lack of knowledge. There's very little we know. Thank you. Pastor Alicia. Yes, of course, there are thousands of fundamental questions. But I think 
the most fundamental question to me is how we conceive of questions. Think, for example, that in the Middle Ages, people did, would not talk about labor. They would talk about human activity. And then, as Polanyi said, after the Enlightenment, we start calling human activity labor. This is a completely uh, different way of framing the question. So, of course, there are many fundamental questions, but the culture of setting for it is definitely fundamental. Okay, fundamental. So, if there is not more questions, then we pass the... Sir, okay. Okay, okay. Let's put this in this round and then we'll finish. Yes. With my comment, I did a provocation in say about environment. I said about nature is society and nature, but nature was for what in the street. There's a, a very brief okay. note, but since Lisa mentioned uh, the science culture. I think it would help if we make a pledge today, because I heard, nothing personal, but I heard here, uh, people still refer to, I use uh, actual quotes, uh, social and hard sciences, social and exact sciences. I could give you thousands of fundamental research to show that social science is as hard as natural science, and it's sometimes even much more exact. So maybe help our culture if at least among us we go back to talk about natural and social sciences. Thank you. Good. We pass the, now the microphone to the uh, lady and the panelist. We so, finish this round. Okay. So I, I think in, to, in the interest of time, I want to just address the issue that you raise about so many fundamental questions. Um, and just to clarify, I'm not saying that the six sets of questions I've outlined are the only fundamental scientific questions. What I'm saying is, if we tackle sustainability challenges like, let's say, rapid urbanization, then if we want our science to contribute to solutions, we have to have adequate answers to those six questions. And that those are six sets of fundamental questions in, in that sense. They lead, if we have adequate answers, they, lead, they will make sure that our solutions are more equitable and more durable. Um, but that doesn't mean that there aren't, you know, and that's the terrain of universities and that's, that takes us into a whole other debate. So I just wanted to clarify that. I think in terms of now reaching political scientists and other types of social sciences, um, one of the problems we've noticed with the way in which uh, funding calls are framed is that they just don't speak to those communities. You know, we were in setting up Future Earth, we had long debates to and fights to make sure that this was not called an Earth System Science Initiative because that does not speak to social scientists. So it's about how we frame and if we frame properly, then we influence the way people think. And then we start reaching the communities. But we have a long way to go. But it is about how we frame our calls. And again, it's about how we organize our funding systems, our research, our research systems more generally. The effect of cellular phones. I mean, they have changed completely the way you're behaving. The whole society, I mean, uh, now you, any place you go, you see people using a, a, a cellular phone, in one way or the other, even kids. Did somebody make uh, or try to understand what the effect of this uh, uh, new techn technological achievement was going to change our society? What? This is, a, this is a, just a very simple, a very simple problem. That's uh, a lot of that's research. Yeah, a lot of research. I was collecting, but I missed because I was using myself. No, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, Chief. Let me let you speak. Okay. If there is, if, if there are books that contain all these stories, what is what what, what is the, the the next step? What what, what should we do? What, uh, is that good? Is that bad? Is it better? Or is it worst? 
We should have the answers. Regarding these technologies? No, the, 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 the cellular phones. I mean, uh, and I was yeah, just, uh, just making this very simple example. Yeah, exactly. You can talk in the, in the, in the other round. Let's, let's continue. You know me very much. Maybe I have no more. Uh, how to work with, with, I work with natural products. I only have a natural sense. I only have natural <laughs> But anyway, <laughs> uh, if you have no more environment, I have to see more to work with. That would be very nice. Okay, you are the one speaking in the next round. Okay, very quickly. Uh, I agree that uh, there are many fundamental questions, fortunately. Even I, uh, I have a, there is a physics here, and I don't know how much I like physics, and uh, of course you are physics, and I have a daughter uh, uh, that uh, wants to be a national physicist, and, uh, and uh, she doesn't care. She, I mean, and I agree with you, I mean, but since I'm in between, I mean, for example, psychiatric disorders, I mean, it's not... A, is not in the top of uh, mortality, but in, mo in, in, uh, in for causing disease, I don't know, is, mobi uh, mo uh, is really very high. And where the solution comes from? From uh, understanding the brain, understanding it. Uh, so the, the drug companies, they don't care because they, 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 there are already some drugs that act uh, a little bit but we don't know a lot of things, and it's causing a lot of trouble. And it's, when I talk to psychiatric disorder, I talk about the, well, drug addiction and everything. I mean, at least 4% uh, of the people in the world have, in one way or another, some, in some part, um, part of uh, their life, uh, a psychiatric disorder. And, and this, I agree with you, I mean, is, this is a problem not, uh, but we, because we were from the universe, we have the PhDs in uh, physics and biochemistry, etc. We are used to the box, and we have to mix that. But even to mix that, we have to to, to have these programs and how to maybe we come. I mean, some people believe that uh, our mind works by quantum mechanics, and <laughs> so what other people believe well, not, not not at that level. But anyway, so these are things that. Uh, uh, a, a part of the world that uh, not, uh, science that uh, probably more than 95 percent that we don't know yet, but but on the other hand, we have psychiatric disorders uh, is something that uh, does need a lot of contribution, probably a lot of a, of a, a, a multidisciplinary, really multidisciplinary uh, uh, research. Thank you. Well, finally, we. We are in the final question, which is recommendation for a food raising strategy to multi a transdisciplinary project in energy, sustainable energy, social environmental risk, urban health and mobility, and problems of poverty and growing oh inequality. <laughs> no, I'm going to cheat. <laughs> I'm going to answer the question before that <laughs> and, tr and end up with one recommendation. So I just want to reflect a little bit on what exactly do we mean when we talk about bringing the natural and social sciences together. Um, and I think a lot of people just assume that we're talking about unification of our disciplines into one and therefore the loss of disciplinary identity um, and the loss of diverse perspectives and approaches that comes with that. And I think that's wrong. I think it means that we need to be really confident in our own discipline in order to work together uh, in an interdisciplinary way. It also means fundamentally being open to new ways of viewing the world and understanding current global realities and open to asking questions that you haven't asked before. Um, and, but it's hard working together. It's difficult. It requires trust. It requires new language. Um, you know, natural and social scientists accuse each other of being naive. Social scientists think natural scientists are naive about the way in which people and society works. And vice versa. Natural scientists think we're naive about how the physical world works. Um, and both are right. It 
it, you also have to understand, I think, that you, unlike perhaps the natural sciences, when you're talking about a social science community, you're not talking about one community. It's a fragmented community. There are many social scientists. There are social scientists who do as exact work as any natural scientist you would hope to find. But then there are others who, if you don't do modeling, who don't do whatever. So they're different social science communities. Um, and you can't force collaboration. It can't be forced top down. These are emergent processes that require time and trust. I think young people, the next generation, are keen to do it. They get it much more than many of us in the room. But they don't have safe spaces in which to experiment, into which to into in which they can develop those relations of trust. And um, there, is, there are no advancement incentives for them to develop interdisciplinary collaborations. It's just the way the universities still work. We are, we are still, and again, it comes back to the radical institutional innovations that we are talking about if we want to promote and foster the kind of dialogue this workshop was set up to foster. We need the enabling environment. And it's not just about funding, it's about institutional enabling conditions in our universities, in our national centers. So this, you want to talk? If you wish, no problem. <laughs> 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 No, well, the fourth, the, the, uh, the last question uh, is that you are asking uh, a solution for everything. <laughs> but, uh, but, well, I, I, I would like to go back to the proposal uh, to find out uh, some particular subject that uh, is uh, uh, society is pretty much involved and has uh, some advances in technological or scientific, whatever. And uh, once we have identified that, get the money and make a call. And as I say, I mean, nobody can uh, uh, force anybody to, to collaborate, but uh, certainly we have to start at some point. And uh, I am not aware of any of, of uh, any of this uh, of this kind of of. of uh, Proposals or, or research. So, in that way, so we would be innovative, <laughs> therefore, uh, and we should, should be taken as, a, as part of the future of the earth. Yeah. I don't know if I have anything more to say, but uh, uh, I, I do agree that. Uh, it's for the next generation and young uh, people, young research should uh, uh, be supported and maybe they should uh, challenge with these questions. I think I have a, we have at FAPEG, for example, uh, uh, an experience when we compare the result, the, the projects of, the network projects of uh, senior research and uh, young research, then when they get together to, to propose a uh, network project, uh, sorry that there are some senior people here in Brazil, <laughs> but usually the young ones are much better in terms of, that's said by the committees because they, they take care, they really, so I think, uh, I think it's, uh, we should look to them because of course it's, it's easy for us, well, we, uh, in, it's easy also to judge uh, senior people because you judge based on what has been done, not what has been proposed, it's, that's easy. So the chance of, uh, of well, of uh, not uh, of uh, uh, success in principle is higher, but I think uh, uh, for, for mediocrity, not for. I think if you want to, I agree that young people should be challenged and uh, especially all these questions. <laughs> well, we have five participation. The first one is Ana Maria Vara. Second, Carlos Aragão. Third, Alice Abreu. Fourth, Anthony Clayton. Fifth, Pepe Franco. Sixth or seventh, whatever. 
<laughs> Anyone who is interested to talk, no problem. We are on time. We are fine. Okay. We start with Ana Maria Barra. Well, just a brief comment. There's a lot of research done on cell phones and how it impacts the, the way people read, the way people organize, the relationship between the use of cell phones and accidents, etc., etc. So just that. There's a lot of research on done already and a lot of. On the zone. Well, now it's Carlos Aranao. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure that the uh, quote is correct, but I think it was Einstein who said that education is what you uh, uh, remember 20 years after you've left uh, school. And so, uh, one, one thing that strikes me is that we live in an age where information grows exponentially. Uh, you know, professional physicists like myself, for example, maybe there are I don't know, Jose Luis helped me, 300, uh, 600 papers a day coming out of the Los Alamos uh, preprint database. If you multiply that by 300, so it's absolutely impossible, even for a physicist in one specific area, to keep track of all the information that's being produced. Therefore, the way that we should uh, think about education is, is, is trying to form rather than inform and make a, a, a serious effort to uh, teach uh, people how to process information, how to uh, deal with concepts and so on. Maybe this is a part of the solution to this problem because uh, when you're faced with a problem uh, and you have to solve it, you will quickly realize that you will need even, even though it's hard to talk to chemists and biologists and, and, and and maybe economists and so on. But uh, the, the problems that we are facing now, uh, due to the degree of complexity, do require uh, this dialogue. So it's inevitable, right? When you think about the, the major problems that face us, like energy, for example, or food, water, whatever, you have to have people with different kinds of training uh, coming together and trying to find a common language. Obviously, for the people that come from natural sciences, it was Galileo who said that uh, you know mathematics is the appropriate language, right? Whether this is going to be true in every aspect of social sciences, it's, it's still a question. Uh, Gerson mentioned, for example, mental disturbances. It strikes me that uh, you know hallucinations in people that have uh, I don't know uh, schizophrenia, for example, uh, have the same pattern whether they come from a uh, culture in Asia or, or, or Latin America or North America. So, yeah, that's a, a big question to be answered there and where many disciplines will have to come together to, uh, to make progress. Uh, the, the basic message is that uh, all these divisions and, and, and our incapacity sometimes to, to dialogue have to do with the fact that we're, we're taught mostly based on information rather than on basic concepts and, 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 and ways of, of processing and dealing with this information. And so my main recommendation is that we, sh we should really think uh, how are we to educate students uh, in the next generations in a society where Google and Wikipedia uh, you know, provide the instant information. Right? How are we going to uh, uh, teach them to have a problem-solving attitude. And if you have a problem-solving attitude, you don't care about the title of the guy that's next to you as long as he can give you a, 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 a suggestion which will help you advance in solving the problem. Uh, my colleague, who is certainly a physicist, mentioned a number of, uh, of advances which are certainly welcome. But we should also think about the, the advances that have been made with great social implications, for example. One third of the economy in the United States is estimated to depend on quantum mechanics, which was in existence in the beginning of the uh, uh, 20th century. So, I mean, and come to think of it, any, any uh, 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 problem that you face does include both uh, so-called natural aspects, 
as well as social aspects. The discovery of the Higgs boson required a management structure which is highly non-trivial and uh, political dealings. Uh, CERN had to you know, fight for the budget and so on and so forth. That involved economists, uh, psychologists to deal with you know, the crazy people at CERN and so on. Okay, and, and so it's, it's very hard, don't to think of it, it's very hard to say this problem is exclusively uh, dealt with by specialists in size such and such. So maybe if we invest, my recommend, if I had to make a recommendation is let's think very seriously about education, how we educate our students, because maybe these, uh, these borders, these frontiers will naturally uh, give way to a dialogue which will be more and more necessary if you really want to solve the problem. Finally, my last phrase. The title of this uh, meeting is very nice. It's uh, Society and Nature. I am definitely convinced that society exists because nature's there. We, we need energy, we need... Uh, and then that's, you know... The big question we have to face is whether nature will survive society, okay? <laughs> And, and maybe this is the big question for the next generations, uh, is what society is doing, uh, going to preserve nature and itself, or are we facing disaster? Thank you. Thank you. Alisa Barro. Okay, so uh, I think I cannot disagree with many of the things that we just heard, but I want to come back again to more concrete proposals, how to go along. I think that uh, uh, the, the, the framework presented by uh, Heidi and her colleague is very interesting. And I think, if I'm not wrong, that ISSC has already put out a call for proposals that uh, broadened a little bit uh, 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 the, the normal idea and wanted the pro program proposed to be really on this multi uh, uh, with this new perspective. And I think that Future Earth also has put already some funding also for projects. I'm not sure. I haven't seen the same way I have looked at yours. But what I think a new step would be that when we have these new proposals approved, it would be very important to have workshops so that they could be discussed. Because I think this would put, you know, uh, a concrete uh, uh, um, view on what we're talking about. If these, how to think out of the box, it's very difficult for us how to think out of the box. And if there are, uh, funding already proposed and, and projects were approved that are said to be this way. It is very important that we uh, communicate them and, and really make them more known and better discussed. So I think this is a step forward that is relatively easy and that should be done as soon as we have them. And uh, of course about future, I think it's, I don't know how it will function. But again, I think that for, perhaps for Ixu Rolak, it would be very important to think about what would be for Ixu Lack a funding program that makes sense within future. This is also a concrete thing that could be discussed that then we would have <coughs> to think whether this would be possible to be uh, communicated to future Earth and so on. But I think it would be a good exercise. <coughs> and a very concrete one. What would be a range of, of uh, programs that would interest uh, it's like to see in the future? And I think that these two would perhaps go a bit forward than simply thinking what is thinking out of the box, that seen proposals that have been approved as being thinking out of the box. Anthony Clayton. 
I'd like to pick up on uh, Heidi's point, if I may. Um, there's a saying that uh, nature is not organized on the same basis as our university departments. And that is actually uh, still, I think, largely the case. There are relatively few genuinely interdisciplinary units. They're still not the norm. Uh, there are some. There's a lot more than there were 10 years ago. And some of them are doing excellent work. But they still are, are relatively few and far between. Part of the problem is that the mainstream funding programs for research are still tend to be organized more by disciplinary boundaries. Uh, you will find examples uh, in, for example, the UK research uh, funding councils. They actually do explicitly cross-link now. Uh, EU funding programs will, will do the same. So we are making progress. But I think perhaps the, the, the most difficult issue is in some ways the, the most subtle, which is that really good interdisciplinary work is hard. It's, it's really hard. Um, it's not just a question of getting natural scientists and social scientists to sit in the same room together. Uh, what you typically find is it takes an awful lot of hard work to actually um, grasp what the other guy is talking about. And I think that to do this, you actually have to um, be, be reasonably knowledgeable in more than one discipline. You have to know your own discipline, but you actually have to be sufficiently familiar with the other guy's discipline to have a, a fair sense of what it is um, he or she is talking about. Uh, and I think that's perhaps the, um, the obstacle which we, we don't really think about often enough. So we, we think if we fix the institutional structure and if we fix the funding mechanisms then everything will happen. In fact, those are really just preconditions. Uh, the, the hard part is actually spending enough time uh, working with people with the other skill set so that you, you are actually doing work which is a genuine synergy of the two as opposed to just doing a little bit of cross-matching at the end of the project. Thanks. Yeah, well, um, there are several, several key problems in, in, in uh, multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary uh, issues. One is obviously the language. You know, every every single uh, uh, classical uh, area has a particular language that it's not easy to translate into the, the the other part. And also, evaluation is something that it's very very difficult because we need to keep the standards. And you know, for many uh, evaluating processes, you know, just trying to understand what is done in this trans or multi or interdisciplinary areas is very, very difficult. So uh, there are all these things and, and uh, there is one other thing that, uh, it, you know, to me bothers a, a little bit, which is the term used for uh, some of the, some of the signs like uh, 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 passion driven or curiosity driven which is, uh, I find it kind of derogative, like, uh, you know, it's useless knowledge that doesn't, that will not ever find, you know, uh, some, some application. And uh, so I think that we should learn how to talk to each other and how to relate with each other, how to evaluate, you know, the processes, and also, as, as Heidi mentioned, you know, to trust each other. Any other question, please? Just to say that my paper is very clear on the challenge of sustainability. Any other question, comment? No one? Well, uh, I'd like to pass the floor to the, the podium again. So, for uh, any final. <laughs> Any final consideration that, that you might, might be interested to say? Any? If, no problem. So I, I think these are great comments, and this is the conversation we want to drive. So I'm not going to, I, I, I'm not going to answer questions, I don't think. But I would like to take the opportunity, given that um, Alice raised it, that 
Yes, ISC has launched a new global funding program called Transformations to Sustainability, where the idea is to fund research on social transformations, but in concrete contexts of application, meaning researchers should pick, they should identify transformation needs or opportunities that relate to specific sustainability challenges. We won't determine what those are because those have to be defined by and co-designed by communities of practice. Um, these transformative knowledge networks, the first call will go out in December this year. Um, the program is currently supported by the Swedish International Development Cooperation Agency and we are going to Beijing next week to talk to the Belmont Forum of Funders to persuade them that this is a valuable program to foster inter and transdisciplinary involving non-academic stakeholders in the co-design and co-production of transformative uh, science, solutions-oriented science. So keep your fingers crossed for us. What is interesting is that some Belmont Forum members don't get that social transformation is a thematic focus in and of itself. So they keep saying, where's the focus? You know, why is this not on water or energy or land? So that's one interesting discussion we're having. And um, the other interesting thing about this program is that we are pushing funding boundaries. We've got money from the donor aid agency. They have their own interests and priorities. So for example, these knowledge networks will have to be led or co-led by researchers from low and middle income countries. And the Belmont Forum have their own set of national priorities and what they can and cannot fund. And trying to bring these communities of funders together, I can promise you, is much harder than getting natural and social scientists to talk to each other. Well, kind of a remark, and it could be taken also as a dirty joke. But global warming started with the uh, development of the uh, anticonceptive pill by a Mexican yeah. doctor, physical doctor. World warming, world warming started there, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, just uh, I will. I'll take my time here just to congratulate uh, Elisa and uh, my friend Madame Limonta by, uh, from uh, X Rolex and also I did the forum in, in uh, the ISSC for I mean for this uh, uh, wonderful and very high uh, well I mean it's, it's not a, it's not finished debate but uh, it's not a finished dialogue and that's it's good that it's not finished because well, I think there are more proposals than uh, conclusions. But I think you are all very... Uh, uh, I should congratulate all of you for the, the very good uh, uh, debates and uh, workshops and talks and discussions and participation, not only, of, uh, not only the speakers, but also the intense participation of uh, the, uh, the people that attend the, the meeting. And then, wow. Well, I should ask everybody to congratulate you. Thank you. Well, before the end, uh, the complete end of the meeting, we have a small closing session. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, very deeply this magnificent uh, panelist we have had this afternoon here. And uh, I ask you for a second big applause for you. The closing. That's closing. No, you have to talk. On behalf of the academy as well. Okay, let me tell you my secret. This was an experiment. <laughs>
I worked to try to, if the dialogue was possible, then next time I'll talk about my own research. I'll expose my own research. Um, um, no, no, no being serious. First, let me thank, uh, before I thank all of you, I have to thank Gerson because he made possible this meeting. His agents make it possible for us to convene as, as well as FINEP, the, Brazilian, the, the two Brazilian founders of this meeting. I want to thank you all. In fact, when I conceived of this, this title, I was very scary because I didn't know if the dialogue was possible. <laughs> now I have to thank you all because I know it takes a lot of tolerance to hear from different uh, continents of knowledge. So you are all very generous. I have to thank the audience as well. And, the, and all the ex excellent questions that were put, put to us. I thank my colleagues for their help and I let Heidi talk about our ISRC and Manuel talk about Ipsa. In the name of the Academy of Science, I thank you all. Well, uh, very frankly speaking, I'm very happy because we could uh, organize and we could uh, do this activity. I remember here in Brazil when the Alice, uh, I mean Elisa and I approached Gerson and uh, was in Argentina actually, no? Yeah. Was in, it was in Argentina. And we asked him to help wow. us for a meeting like this. And Jason was very open. He said, yes, I want to help. I want to do whatever is necessary. Let's work together. So, and now we we are here in this uh, Ciudad de Maravillosa, no? The Rio, no? And we are so, so, I'm so happy because of this. Then i like to thank very deeply Elisa, she has been, uh, I mean, uh, helpful and always uh, open, always, uh, uh, whenever you call her, she's ready. Yes, let's do it. Of course, Gerson, again, I'd like to thank the Brazilian Academy of Science, starting by Jacob and uh, to all the, 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 the personalities of here. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, I like to thank Marcia Melo and all this group of magnificent uh, workers of the academy here, all these ladies, the cookers of the academy, they prepare nice food for us. So everybody, all of you of the academy, so we are very thankful. We are very uh, happy to be here and we were very well treated. And also, uh, I'd like to congratulate my colleagues of the ICSU Scientific Committee who made a beautiful presentation, so I, I felt very happy listening to them, and the people of the ICSU Rolla Office as well. to say, I want to congratulate to Alice Abreu, this special lady who was the director of ICSU from whom I learned a lot. Precisely, I was working here in Brazil when I was nominated to go to Mexico. So, I was in Recife, then I took that, that excuse to come to Rio. Then I said, I have to go to work too to Mexico, but I have to go first to Rio. I spent some days here. Well, what happened with you? No, I have to start to renew my work in, in Mexico. And uh, then we went for Mexico, etc. So it has been very interesting and very, I mean, stimulating to be here and uh, to be with you in this organization. And thanks to all of you, all the other participants, for, I mean, for the stimulation we feel 
having people so interested in this type of topics. Thank you very much. So if I may just add my own words of thanks to all the actors that have been mentioned, to the, the Brazilian Academy, to the sponsors and agencies that have made this possible, to Ixirola, um, the entire team, and to you, Eliza, it's, it's um, really fantastic for ISSC that you have been so um, engaged in this, and, and we're proud to be um, associated with, with this event, and I hope it's the first in a series of conversations. You know, it strikes me that we still complain a lot about you know, relations between uh, the domains not always being what they should be. But if you think about, if I think about having to do a generic introductory presentation about what is the ISC and what do we do, and if, if my colleagues from ICSU do the same, increasingly those PowerPoint slides are just full of ICSU slash ISC. We are working more and more together, and this event will be on those PowerPoint slides and will consolidate uh, the relations. And um, I thank you for your contributions to that. Also, thank you very much for the very festive evening uh, last night and the singing, uh, which I will take with me <laughs> as an example of how to lubricate the relations uh, between our communities. Thank you.